I like to call any necklace that has a whole bunch of different things hanging down at different lengths, kind of all clustered together, a chandelier type or earrings or anything. But all you're going to need for this is chain and 20 gauge or something, some close enough gauge that'll work for you. Um, same color as your chain. In this case, we're doing silver. It could be silver plated or silver colored or whatever. Chain, 20 gauge wire, and some beads. That's it. I'm going to be using primarily six millimeter, maybe a little four millimeter. Those are the ones I like. This six millimeter is like the size of a green pea. Four millimeters like the size of a head of a pin. And those kind of go well together for a lot of pieces. And that's pretty much it. Um, you want to have chain that has slightly medium sized links. You can even do large links, but I think you just want them big enough that you can fit the loops through. You could do some jump rings, but you don't have to if you do it this certain way because that could help you to connect stuff a little more easier sometimes, but really you just need these three. And what we're gonna do is have our chain, add some beads, connect those beads with some simple loops, and hang some little lengths of the same chain from those beads, and that's it. I'm hoping I spelled chandelier right. If I did not, then too late. Now, sometimes it helps to draw it out as you see me doing. It's not just for you to watch me do it. It'll help you a lot of times to draw your designs first. In this case, it's almost imperative. And you can get one of those little cardboard type trays that has like a necklace pattern that has like a 3D ridge going through it where you can line up your beads and it has the, the lengths measured out and, and the sizes and everything. And it has little trays for your beads. And it's, um, they used to sell those for anywhere from a dollar to five dollars. You can get them online, you can get them at the art store. I don't have one with me, so I'm just going to make my own and I'm going to hope the beads don't roll around too much. And if they do, that's my fault. But in any case, you want to get a real feel for how, and again, if, if you have someone with you to try it on or if you have a mannequin or something, you can help because this, this is going to require a lot of just adjusting and tweaking as you go about it. But basically, it's pretty, pretty easy. You just think about how you want it to hang on the person's neck. And again, roughly, you don't have to be a perfectionist either. And think about how far apart you want the beads to be spaced. And um, just kind of go for it from there. Think about how many you want. And think about how far down you want each chain to hang. And, you know, if you mess up your drawing, you can always cross it out and try again, especially if it's pencil. You can always just, you know, kind of, whatever, tweak it. Something to note, if you're going to make the necklace longer, these are all going to kind of bunch together. And the necklace, instead of looking like this shape, is going to look more like this shape as it hangs longer and longer down their neck. The necklace widens out as it gets higher up, as anyone who's ever worn a necklace will remember if they think about it. So if you really want these to be spaced a certain way, you want to think about having this pretty close to the collarbone, you know. Let's see if this is anatomically correct. But even that is a little bit low. You probably want it like a little higher. I'd say like two inches from being a choker, two inches down in this direction, which is kind of four inches longer but something around there but basically play with it and try to get it when you actually try it on someone make sure they're hanging the length you want because that's gonna make all the difference in the world you could they could look beautiful on your table and then you go to try it on someone and they all bunch together like this and it still it will look cool but it won't look like the way you wanted it to look so but anyway and then think about are you gonna add little extra beads in certain places how are you going to do that? Are you going to play around with different sizes, different colors? So map all this out, actually lay the beads down and lay the pieces of chain down as you cut them. And what you're going to do, first you're going to, um, first you're going to cut the pieces of chain and lay them down with the beads and everything. And then as you adjust them, you say, no, I want this a little longer, a little shorter. Also make sure the, the chain isn't like that. Make sure it's stretched out tight because that's how it's going to hang. And once you get the chain sizes all to where you want, um, you want to be a little, a little tedious here and count the links might be a little annoying, but once you're like, I definitely want this one here. Okay. How many links is that? How many links is this? 
one, two, three, four, five. And this is where it's better to draw it than to just try to use math. Because you would think, oh, I'm going to go from here and then I'm going to go three links less for this, three links less for this. And it's not necessarily a perfect ratio because you might find you want it to hang more in a circle instead of a straight line. And so you, you, your numbers between how many links are in each part might vary greatly. So you actually want to map it out on the paper and see if you visually like it. But you should have this one and this one the same length because once it really hangs from the person, then it's really going to get stretched out. And if you uh, made one a couple links longer or shorter, it might not line up the same way. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. You guys can do it. Um, the only thing I have to show you is what all of you have already learned. Well, obviously, also count the, the number of links in between here where you connect this, where you connect each one. You want to have the same number of links in between. So even if they're rolling around on your paper, when it gets stretched out, they're spaced evenly. Um, but yeah, other than that, basically all you really need to know is to take about two inches, put the bead on, give yourself a little bit less than half an inch, make a right angle, and then with the round nose pliers about a third of the way up, start rolling it just till you feel your wrist turn enough that you don't want to turn anymore. And don't force your wrist, reposition, roll, roll, and then you get like a really nice little loop. Make sure you roll it all the way till it's closed. Squeeze it from this side, make sure it's flat and straight. Push the bead up against it. And then from the other side, make a right angle against the bead this time, as tight as you can. Try to make it tight. And I always like to have it going the same way as that bead. Again, cut a little less than half an inch. That's all you're gonna need to make the loop right on the end of the wire, about a third of the way up the pliers, roll, and then reposition, roll, reposition. Sometimes you gotta play with it a little bit to get the loop right in there tight. And if it's not completely in there, sometimes you just gotta back up and rock it a little bit, but then you can also take your flat nose and just pinch it and make sure it's really good. And then make sure these are lined up going the same way because that's usually just a good idea. So that's the easiest way. There's one more way where you can take about this much wire and put the bead on the same way, right angle, and then roll it backwards. Make sure it's tight and then push the bead up against that. Make your right angle against the bead again. And this time, hold the pliers like that, wrap the loop around the pliers, or wrap the wire around to make the loop. Roll the loop tight into, and make sure you get it tight so it's the same as, as that one. That's not, that's not tight enough, we can go tighter. And then wrap around once like that, and then around the bead once like that, and then cut it right, right there so you can just tuck it right in. Make sure it's tucked tight enough it's not going to scratch. And you can even do it with two or three or four or five beads stacked. Do the same thing. You wrap around once and then you wrap around the bead. But then you go in the crevice, you wrap around the next bead, and then finally around the loop. And then cut it and tuck it right in there. Then you're going to want to check it make sure your loops are lined up the same depending on what you're doing. And you are good. Sometimes if you are if you can control which side it's going to face, you want the pretty diagonal swirl sides to face out rather than the back. But usually these pieces will end up spinning around and it'll look pretty from all directions.